yesterday's hearing on a proposed gag order for the former president. Judge Aileen Cannon told the prosecutor, quote, I don't appreciate your tone when the attorney appeared to get exasperated as she questioned the need to modify Trump's conditions of release. Smith's office has challenged those conditions over Trump's false claims that FBI agents were prepared to kill him when they were carrying out a search warrant at his Mar-a-Lago estate in 2022. They, of course, were not. The tense exchange came as the prosecutor was arguing Judge Cannon should bar Trump from making more inflammatory statements about FBI agents who worked on the investigation for their safety. The attorney later apologized and said he did not mean to come across as unprofessional. At the same time, Judge Cannon suggested she is skeptical of the prosecutor's argument that Trump's comments could lead to violence by his supporters. Hmm. In the end, Judge Cannon, who was appointed by Trump, did not issue a ruling on the prosecutor's request for a gag order. Instead, she gave both sides until tomorrow now to file additional evidence for her to consider. So, Joe, it does appear in this case, Judge Cannon going out of her way to make the case that there's no threat to FBI agents. We don't need this gag order as if we haven't watched what Donald Trump can unleash when he wants to. Well, it, it's just simply outrageous. Uh, and, and she makes one outrageous comment after another, one outrageous ruling after another. She's already been rebuked in, in a, an earlier uh, situation by the 11th Circuit for shilling for Donald Trump. And Elise Jordan, she had two judges come to her asking her to step off the case. Let me tell you something, that just doesn't happen and when it does, when you have two judges coming to you saying you need to step off the case, you step off the case if you're interested in what your reputation is going to be among, you know, other judges, the judicial system, those who revere the rule of law. She just doesn't really care. She she from the outside, she she is doing everything she can do to play into her critics view that she is little more than a hack for Donald Trump. Well, it's a very Trumpian rejection of norms to not step aside, to say, oh, I'm going to stay in this case that really I should recuse myself. I don't have the level of expertise, the experience being on the court that long, or given all the, the nature of the classified documents and the time that's uh, going to take to process. it. It really is unbelievable that just nothing is going to happen on this case until well after the election. And I know that sometimes the wheels of justice can move slowly, but you would have thought there would have been a little bit more urgency given the state of democracy and the implications that this case has. Well, I mean, and Willie, when, when she, she even puts out there that the jury instructions can can basically be whatever Donald Trump's view of the law should be for him uh, is just yet one other example. But just uh, again, something just it's sort of a real life uh, a moment to, to look at on how disconnected she purposefully is from reality is when she says that this man's threats can't impact other people's lives when this man's wow. threats and his words have led to Nancy Pelosi's husband being bludgeoned uh, nearly to death in his home has led to people melting pipe bombs. It's led to uh, uh, just uh, just hundred countless death threats, and people have had to get round the clock security. Yeah, I mean, what she's saying is a lie. She knows that what she's saying is a lie, and yet she says it anyway from a position. Uh, 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 of a federal bench saying that Donald Trump's threats can't cause any violence or threats of violence. Yeah, I mean, read the newspapers. That's a that's a lie on its face. In fact, you could go to an, uh, another judge, probably in, in, in that same judicial district, and they would take judicial notice of the fact that Donald Trump's threats often lead to violence or threats of violence. Yeah, it's not speculation. We've watched it happen, and you just laid out all the cases in which it has happened. And that prosecutor from the special counsel's office said to Judge Cannon, urging her to act now on this gag order and not to, quote, wait for tragedy to strike. And she said, well, you've got to establish some actual connection between A and B, which I think you just did. So you might recall back in May, Trump seized upon an outrageous conspiracy theory percolating in far right circles 
a theory based upon an extreme mischaracterization of the FBI search warrant of Mar-a-Lago. Trump claimed in a fundraising email that President Biden and the FBI were, quote, locked and loaded to take me out during the 2022 search of Mar-a-Lago. He later posted that Biden, quote, authorized the FBI to use deadly lethal force. But what Trump tried to portray as an attempt on his life, really just a distortion of the standard boilerplate language that accompanies every FBI search. His false narrative was based entirely on this, the FBI's policy on the use of force. Basically, it says that agents can respond with deadly force only when their lives are in imminent danger. So that language, not unique to the search of Mar-a-Lago. In fact, it was the very same policy that the FBI used in their search of President Biden's home as well. If anything, throughout the process of recovering those documents from Mar-a-Lago, Trump got an unusual amount of leniency, including the fact that the FBI notified the Secret Service before executing the warrant. Oh, one other thing. Trump and his family, they weren't even at Mar-a-Lago while that search took place. But none of those inconvenient facts stopped Trump's allies from amplifying his lie. They're saying Trump's going to unleash assassination squads on his enemies? But Biden unleashed armed agents into Trump's house, authorizing them to use deadly force. Right. Maybe they were looking for a little action. Maybe. Something actually could have gone down, I guess, at Mar-a-Lago, uh, beyond just looking for the documents. Why was Merrick Garland prepping for a possible, what, shootout? Merrick Garland basically issued a kill order for President Trump. Now, for Jack Smith, all of that was obviously real cause for concern. And in a recent filing, he urged Judge Cannon to impose a narrow modification to the terms of Trump's release to limit what he can say. Smith wrote that Trump is left to argue that the First Amendment will be eroded unless he is permitted to lie about FBI agents intending to murder him and his family. The law requires no such thing. He then pointed to how Trump's rhetoric has led to imminent threats to law enforcement including an example of a Trump supporter armed with an AR-15 and a nail gun attempting to attack an FBI office in Ohio three days after the Mar-a-Lago search took place. He pointed out that hours after Trump posted on his social media platform about the search, the supporter posted, kill FBI on site. So this afternoon, Jack Smith's prosecutors made their case to Judge Cannon in Fort Pierce. They once again cited Trump's false claims that he was the target of an assassination attempt and told the court there was no reason for such incendiary language that would invite violence as retribution from Trump supporters. The special counsel saying, you don't need a tragedy to strike in order to get mm. a bond modification. And the law supports that context and that idea. There was also another phrase that we used by special counsel's office. They said Trump has a peculiarly potent tool and that's his ability to reach his followers on social media. Trump himself has acknowledged in writing and in verbal statements that he knows the power of social media for him. And that's why there was the argument from special counsel's office that you don't need something bad to happen. You don't need a link between those examples that you just read and, and explained to our viewers and Donald Trump to say that their causal link there creates the need. It's actually the threat of significant, imminent, foreseeable danger to these law enforcement officers. Now, Todd Blanche, on behalf of Donald Trump, did his meandering thing that he does, but he basically said, Judge, eventually maybe this will have to happen, maybe at trial when these witnesses are called, but otherwise you don't have a link and a direct connection between Trump and these incidents that have been raised as exhibits and examples in special counsel's motion. And because of that, it's a prior restraint on free speech He's a political candidate for the office of the president, and it's on the eve of a presidential debate, and you shouldn't do it. Mary, how would you push back against that supposed lack of connective tissue between Donald Trump's words and the threat of violence against law enforcement officials? I think the way to push back is the way that Jack Smith and his team have done, uh, have explained in every court where they've sought an order like this. This one is different because this is about modifying the conditions of his, ba of his bail in order to restrict certain speech that causes, again, that significant and imminent foreseeable danger to law enforcement. But in every other case, including in D.C. and up in Manhattan, the, the prosecutors have given example after example of things that Mr. Trump says over social media or at campaign rallies and actions and threats taken by individuals out in the United States. Those might be call-in threats, uh, threatening witnesses, threatening judges, staff, 
threatening prosecutors and their staffs. It might be actual efforts to commit an act of violence, like the example from right after the search of Mar-a-Lago. Um, and, you know, there are many, many, many of these that they have to point to. So to, to suggest there's not a cause and effect, mm -hmm. I think, really is to ignore what uh, several years now have, sh have shown us. I think it was reasonable for her to ask, would redactions take care of it? And what Mr. Harbuck explained is, well, even with redactions, there have been leaks of the names of those agents, and those are available, you know, out there still. They, they can't ever be taken down once that have, has leaked. And I actually think the reaction, redactions have probably prevented them from being that tragedy uh, that, you know, we don't want to have to wait for. But somebody who is determined can certainly find out the identity today of these agents. So if uh, if Cannon grants this gag order, that'd be the third gag order for the former president. Um, can you compare the gag order requests in this to the others? So the New York state state trial that we just had, the gag order that was in place, was intended to protect the trial. So it was fairly specific. It said Donald Trump cannot comment publicly, any party cannot comment publicly about the jurors, the witnesses, or essentially the courtroom staff. The order that DOJ is seeking here is different. What DOJ is asking basically is, we don't want him making comments that could endanger law enforcement officials. And you remember a couple months ago, Trump started saying this ridiculous false theory that when DOJ searched his house, the FBI searched his house, there was some plan to potentially ass assassinate him, an outrageous, inflammatory statement. So DOJ's trying to tamp that down. Right. I think Judge Cannon is a bit resistant because she says that DOJ needs to show something more specific than just generalized concern that someone might do something. And she said, we haven't seen any specific example. I mean, if you look at Trump's history, though, there are plenty of examples. Yeah, I mean, Judge, there were no affidavits from particular FBI uh, officials or, or anything. Do you think the judge is right to be skeptical? I do, I, but I, I think there's a way to thread the needle here. I think that the only thing he's saying that's endangering anyone is uh, they're, they're out to kill me, Biden's out to assassinate me, FBI wants me dead and tried to kill me. He needs to stop saying that because I think that endangers law enforcement writ large. They, he doesn't know these FBI agents, their names have been redacted. I'm not sure they're in specific danger, but we've had incidents that based on things he said, some of his... I, I was told to use the word voters, not followers in the last episode, so in the last segment. But his voters have done bad things. They have, they have walked into an FBI office, threatened to kill people. Somebody just got terrible hate mail. Uh, I guess it was Alvin Bragg. That they, they would kill him. So things happen when, when people speak the way he's speaking. And it's so obviously false. See, this is why some days, guys, I literally wake up angry when you have stories like this. Because here you have a, a old Donnie crony, stooge, whatever you want to call them, basically ignoring the reality in front of their eyeballs, something that they can hear, see, taste, smell, whatever. That Donald Trump's threats and indeed the actions of his supporters have a direct material effect on scaring people, on threatening harm, loss of life, on juries, Witnesses, judges, prosecutors, courtroom staff, and all of those people's families, if they dare to go against Donald Trump in any way, if they dare to convict him, charge him, uh, provide evidence that may lead to a conviction or charge, anything is on the table. And it's it, and, and, and Cannon is worried about First Amendment rights. And look, I get it. First Amendment rights are incredibly important. And I understand the impulse to, whenever possible, err on the side of protecting First Amendment rights. I get it. 100 percent. But with Donald Trump, we have an established pattern. This isn't the first time. We've seen his threats. We've seen how his threats against people have worked out. We've seen how he's made threats, for example, sharing information about Barack Obama's house or whatnot. And then, you know, basically immediately within a couple days, somebody is arrested, you know, trying to break into Obama's house, like on the way to Obama's house to break into it. And we've seen Trump's comments about juries and whatnot lead to people trying to dig up information on the anonymous juries. Donald Trump likely isn't guilty of criminal threat charges because he's careful enough 
to do it stochastically, as I've said before, where he just mentions something that he doesn't even say, I want it to happen. He's like, oh, something could, something awful could happen. These people could, could really be hurt. Something really bad could happen. And then his supporters take that dog whistle and run with it. And Trump knows that. And everyone knows that. Apparently, Judge Dumb Dumb Cannon either doesn't know that and she's too stupid to be a judge or frankly too stupid to hold any job or two she knows and she's lying and she doesn't give a damn